and Voorhees, welcome to the Flipped Classroom for Ancient Civilization. This is Mr. Rossiter. I'm excited to start with our very first lesson. We're starting Ancient Civilizations as part of our study of world history. We we'll start off with the study of history and understanding exactly what history is. We're starting Chapter 1, Uncovering the Past. Lesson 1, Studying History. What we want to do today with this video is hopefully you'll learn that A, history is the study of the past. That B, we can improve our understanding of people's actions and beliefs through the study of history. And that C, that historians use clues from various sources to learn about the past. I want to start off with just a sense for what you understand already about what history is and what historians do. Ask yourself this question. Which of these two is a true statement? That A, we are who we are because of what people did in the past. Or that B, what people did in the past has little impact on who we are today. Pause here and play once you have an answer. A is going to be the true statement. We didn't just automatically show up and exist as we are without the people before us and the people before them and the people before them. We are who we are now because of what people in the past did back then to lead up to today. Here's another question. Which of these is a true statement? A. History is helpful only for understanding the past. Or B. That history is helpful for predicting what may happen in the future. Pause here and play again once you have an answer. B. Those who fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it in the future. If I notice that a civilization made a foolish mistake that caused their great and glorious downfall, I'm not going to make that same mistake. Otherwise, I'm going to end up like them. History is very helpful for predicting what's going to happen in the future because it may have already happened before. Here's another question. Which of these is true? That A, historians relate facts but do not interpret them, or B, historians relate facts and interpret them too? Pause here and hit play once you have an answer. B. Historians just don't look at facts from the past and say this happened, this happened. They put them together as if they're pieces of a puzzle. You may have the edges of a jigsaw puzzle, but unless you know exactly where the centerpieces go, you don't know what you're looking at until you're finished. That's what historians do. They take clues from the past, put them together to tell a story. So I was digging around the back here, and I found this old jar. And this old jar's got some markings on it. Take a look. At first glance, I'm wondering, what could this be? But I recognize the markings on this jar to help me understand what this jar could mean. The reason I know is because I've studied this language before. When I was in college, I did Japanese. And I recognize these symbols as Japanese hiragana, letters from the Japanese alphabet. And so I'm able to read this and know exactly what this means. Now, this actually ends up being my last name in Japanese. Roshita. It's been a while, I'm a little rusty. But because I used my background in studying this language, I'm able to decipher and uncover the meaning of what this jar is all about. It belonged to me. It's been so long since I remember. I used my studies to help me solve a riddle that existed a while ago. That's what historians do. Okay, so here's a big idea that we want to focus on about history and why we're learning about history. There are things that couldn't be created or used thousands of years ago. Think about trying to imagine these things existing in ancient Egypt, YouTube, in the pyramids, long distance calling, I'm going to call China from Italy. Couldn't do it. There were no rockets, there were no satellites, 
and there were no televisions. So you couldn't have Dish TV or anything like that. There's no GPS navigation. If you didn't know how to get from one place to another, you had to find another way. There were no power tools. Everything that you had to build, you had to do it by hand. There was no LED lighting. At night, the world was a very dark place. And there was no motorized transportation. No cars, no trucks, no trains, no cruise ships, no airplanes. Nothing like that. Pardon me. So you had to find your own way around the world without the assistance of a lot of the technology that we just accept as around these days. History. History is the study of the past. It's when we look at the past and understand what happened. A historian is somebody who studies history. Now their focus is on human history. There are a lot of different types of history. You can study the history of the earth by looking at rocks. But that's not the main focus on history that historians look at. They look at human history. Historians want to study culture. Now, culture is the combined knowledge, beliefs, customs of a group of people, small or large. Everything that a group of people knows, believes in, and does is a culture. This is different a little bit from archaeology. Archaeology is the study of the past based on what people left behind. Archaeologists are these people who go around digging and finding clues and then using those clues to piece together what the world was like. Jewelry, dishes, weapons, tools, anything that archaeologists can find from thousands of years ago or hundreds of years ago helps them tell a story. So, very quickly, pause after this Ask yourself this question. How are history and archaeology similar? History can be our own story before we existed. So, I'll tell you my family's story. The reason I am who I am. I started things with my family's joining together after they separately came to the United States from Ireland and from Italy and formed a base in around New York City. I grew up in New York City, went to college in Boston, and then moved to Bakersfield where I met my wife and started a family. All of these parts of where I come from help make me who I am. It's a part of the reason why I enjoy St. Patrick's Day so much, and I have a clotter ring for my family heritage. It's why I love Italian food. It's why I still talk with a little bit of a New York accent. It's because of where I came from. It tells us who we are and why we are the way we are. And understanding other cultures helps us understand why other people are the way that they are. That's important. That matters. When we find these clues from history, if we're archaeologists, there's a couple of different types. There are fossils. Fossils are parts or imprints of something that was once alive. Everybody thinks of dinosaur bones as fossils. But you can have a plant that's fallen and gets covered up by mud and pressed into that mud and dirt over thousands of years. When you uncover the trail that that plant has left behind, that's a fossil. If you see a footprint, well, that was left behind by something that was once alive, a paw print. Those are fossils. It doesn't just have to be dinosaur bones. It's a part or imprint of something that was once alive. That's one type of clue. You also have artifacts. Artifacts are objects that were created and used by humans. So any type of tool from history that was made by people and then used by people. Those are artifacts. Ask yourself this, based on the definitions. How are fossils and artifacts similar and different? Pause here and continue after you've talked about it. When we try to piece together the story of the past, there are a couple of different types of sources. We have a primary source. Primary means first. And a primary source is a person who was directly involved in or witness to an event. Some examples might be letters, 
diaries, laws, court documents, contracts, royal commands. Basically, a primary source is somebody who saw what happened or did the thing themselves. If you want to talk about the Boston Tea Party, some primary sources might be some people who saw the Patriots dumping the tea overboard into the harbor, off the ship. Or it could be the people who did it themselves. Those are primary sources. An account directly by the people who saw it happen or who made it happen. But a secondary source is information gathered by somebody who did not witness or take part in the event. Textbooks, newspaper articles, journal articles. Someone who heard that something happened. These are not sources who directly made history happen. They're reporting it. A secondary source is a reporter. The textbook that you're reading is not a primary source because the people who wrote your textbook were not there thousands of years ago to say firsthand that they saw the pyramids be built. That's not a primary source. They were not witnesses. They weren't even alive. They're secondary source because they gathered information to report. So, very quickly, summary. History studies the past. Archaeologists use clues to tell the story of the past. History can tell us about our past and the past of others. And we can learn a lot about history from both primary sources, people who were there, and secondary sources, people who reported and put together information about what happened, but weren't there themselves. With that said, take a look at the notes that you just took. If you didn't take notes, if you got caught up in the video, go back and take some notes down from this presentation. Bring them to class tomorrow. We're going to use your notes to do some activities based on what we learned today. I hope this was great. I'm looking forward to doing this again. I'll see you later.